It's said that the only constant is change. In AMC, we count on it. In 2018, America's military was given a new focus. So we launched a new vision, adjusted our priorities, and got after it. Hurricane season brought us Florence, Michael, and Dorian. When our friends needed help, we answered. We evacuated the vulnerable and brought supplies to the devastated. Whenever our country needs us, to mobilize resources at our southern border or bring America's warriors home after the battle is won, we are ready. When dictators abused power, starved their people, and defied the rule of law, America chose mobility warriors to carry the message of hope and remind our adversaries we will never abandon the cause of liberty. When it comes to life-saving care, our resolve cannot be measured. When a soldier's only hope was to fly 8,000 miles nonstop with a triple AR, we did. And when a family thought it was their last goodbye, we made sure it wasn't. For our teammates who gave their last full measure, we proudly honored them. We staged the world's largest mobility exercise to strengthen our partnerships and integrate our capabilities. When tensions peaked in the Persian Gulf, America sent us to open an airbase to bring expeditionary air power and assure our partners and allies that we have their back. As mobility airmen, we always have the watch. In the first hours of 2020, we took to the skies with paratroopers armed to the teeth. We sharpened our combat edge by acquiring the KC-46. Then America found itself face to face with a new threat and our mobility enterprise led the Air Force's COVID-19 response. We overcame obstacles, like how to transport infected patients without a containment unit by innovating one. For 93 consecutive days, we tested our new warfighting headquarters, leaned on our command battle staff to protect our airmen, and operated at the speed of war. So here we are. Two years passed, and so much has changed. We have adapted. We have grown. And, and still, still, always, always ready. ready. Ladies and gentlemen, although today's ceremony is indoors, all outdoor customs and courtesies will be followed. As a reminder, military members in uniform should render a salute on the first note of ruffles and flourishes and the national anthem. During the national anthem, our civilian guests should place their right hand over their heart. Veterans may also render a military salute to the flag or place their hand over their heart. At the end of the ceremony, please remain at your seats until the official party departs. Thank you. Members of Air Mobility Command, distinguished visitors and honored guests, good morning. My name is Captain Alexi Reed, your narrator for today's ceremony. On behalf of our presiding officer, General Charles Q. Brown, Jr., United States Air Force Chief of Staff, welcome to today's change of command where the reins of responsibility and leadership for Air Mobility Command will pass from General Marianne Miller to General Jacqueline D. Van Ovost. Our change of command ceremony is a time-honored military tradition, deeply rooted in history and dates back to the time of Frederick the Great of Prussia. During that period, military organizations developed flags unique to their unit with specialized colors and designs. When the soldiers followed their leader into battle, their flag was used to provide a very visible point around which members of the unit could rally. To this flag, both commander and soldiers of a unit would dedicate their loyalty, trust, and allegiance. The formal change of command ceremony afforded these troops the opportunity to witness a new leader assuming their dutiful position. Mobility airmen stand proudly in defense of our nation, both at home and abroad, executing the command's daily mission, rapid global mobility, delivering the right effects at the right place and at the right time. The Airmen of Air Mobility Command, active duty, Air National Guard, Air Force Reserve, and civilians provide airlift, aeromedical evacuation, aerial refueling, and global air mobility support for all of America's armed forces, achieving unrivaled global reach for America, always. Today's ceremony will be a unique format, but one that is vital as we continue the fight of COVID-19 virus by maintaining social distancing. This situation has and will continue to present us with challenges that we will overcome. Today we are broadcasting this ceremony live over Facebook for those who are teleworking and for family and friends who cannot join us here today. This ceremony is being recorded and will be made available for viewing on the Air Mobility Command Facebook page after the conclusion of today's event. 
At this time, we would like to take the opportunity to welcome our special guests. We would like to welcome General Miller's family who are attending virtually, her father, Mr. Ted Miller, her sister Peg, and her brothers, Ted, Tim, Matt, and Michael, as well as their families. General Miller's special guest here with us today, Father Jim Dieters and Mr. Nick Jackich. The former Command Chief, Air Mobility Command, Chief Master Sergeant Terrence Green, and his wife, Debbie. We would now like to welcome General Van Ovos' husband, Mr. Alan Frosch, her father Hans, and sister Ingrid, and her mother Joy, who is attending virtually. Her best friend, Miss Mim Anderson. <laughs> Family friend, Father Pat O'Brien. Family friends, Pastors Dawn and Kimberly Dawson. And her former Command Chief, Joint Base Andrews, Chief Master Sergeant Rich Brackett, United States Air Force retired, and his wife, Debbie. We would now like to welcome our distinguished military and civilian guests. Spouse of the Commander, United States Transportation Command, Mrs. Maureen Lyons. Air Mobility Command Civic Leaders, Dr. Rhonda Strade and Cynthia Lloyd. The Deputy Commander, United States Transportation Command, Vice Admiral D. Mewborn and his wife, Carrie. The Senior Enlisted Leader, United States Transportation Command, Chief Master Sergeant Jason France. The Deputy Commander, Air Mobility Command, Lieutenant General Brian Robinson and his wife, Maureen. <laughs> Spouse of the Command Chief, Air Mobility Command, Mrs. Kareen Kruzelnik. <laughs> Finally, we would also like to extend a warm welcome to all MAGCOM commanders, mobility senior statesmen, elected officials, civic leaders, former Air Mobility Command commanders and deputy commanders, general officers, senior executive service members, commanders, command chiefs, friends, and family who are attending both virtually and in person with us here today. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for ruffles and flourishes, playing of the national anthem, and invocation.
Teammates, I'm going to ask you, invite you to do three things with me in a moment of silence. The first is to mark this milestone in our history according to the dictates of your conscience. The second is to invite you to remember all our comrades around the globe standing up to terror, standing up to aggression, and standing up to a pandemic with their very lives. And the third is to offer a blessing. I invite you to offer a blessing for General Miller in her new season of life. Again, according to the dictates of your conscience, please join me. Gracious deliverer, friend to the lost and forgotten, this is the day you have made and I rejoice in it. I lift up Air Mobility Command to you and all our airmen and families within. Continue to guard us and guide us as we deliver hope day in and day out. Continue to sustain us as we work to sustain peace. Thank you for General Miller's season of leadership. Thank you for her mom and her dad. Thank you for leading her into the gift of peace. Thank you for whispering wisdom in her ear, for whispering whose hands, for whispering there is no law against love. Papa, please continue to grant Mary Ann the peace that passes all understanding. Let her continue to walk in your way, to serve in your way. Lord, as General Van Ovost accepts our Air Mobility Command's flag, thank you for her mom and her dad. Continue to grant Jackie discernment, good humor, and stamina now and in the days ahead. Keep her love affair with Alan tender, true, strong, and playful. Keep her ears attuned in the moment. Keep her heart attuned to the needs of airmen and their families. Keep being her whispering wingman. And now, Lord, I ask you to bless our airmen and their families, bless all our comrades in arms, bless our nation and our allies as we continue to fight for liberty, life, and justice. I pray this in your most precious and saving name. Amen. Thank you, Band of Mid-America and Chaplain Branningham. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General Charles Q. Brown, Jr. There's an old saying that still rings true today. Amateurs talk tactics, professionals talk logistics. Now, beginning my career as a fighter pilot, as I rose to the ranks, I learned the importance of logistics and our mobility air forces. And as the global landscape continues to evolve, we must adapt and overcome in order to compete, deter, and win. Today, our competitors are investing in capabilities to contest our lines of communication, and deny us access to the global commons. Their objective is to limit our global reach, to ensure our ability to deliver, whether for combat operations, or for humanitarian relief, our focus on global reach to deliver America's air power must never waver. And I know the professionals of Air Mobility Command are always ready to answer our nation's call, that you stand ready to deliver the right effects to the right place at the right time. Because you know the success of our Air Force, the Joint Force is contingent on the ability of our mobility Air Forces to deliver. Today, we gather to witness the transfer of this great responsibility to give thanks to General Mary Ann Miller for her leadership and to welcome General Jackie Van Elvos as she takes command. Before going any further, I'd like to thank the many distinguished visitors that were with us today and extend a warm welcome to the mobility senior statesmen joining us this morning, either in person or online. To our craft and industry partners, thank you. 
to the command team for U.S. Transcom, General Steve Lyons and uh, Maureen, we appreciate you being with us today. And to your entire command, thank you for joining us. And to our elected and local civic leaders, thank you for taking care of our airmen and families here in the local area and for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us for this very important event. And to the airmen and families of Air Mobility Command, past and present, thank you for honoring us with your attendance this morning, both in person and those that are watching online. We also have uh, Father uh, Jim Dieter and Mr. Nicholas uh, Jackie here with us today. Thank you for being support to Mary Ann during this time of transition as she moves on to retirement. And although they were uh, unable to join us in person, I would also like to extend a warm welcome to Mary Ann's father, Mr. Ted Miller, to her, to his, uh, her sister P Peg, and to her brothers, Ted, Tim, Matt, and Michael, and their families. They're all joining us virtually today. Know that your love and guidance and support helped Mary Ann to be a tremendous airman, an outstanding officer, a great sister, and a great daughter. I'd also like to welcome General Ivanovos' uh, family. Alan, thank you so much for your love and support you've given to Jackie along the way. Through the many moves, the long hours, the TDYs, you've been a wellspring of support and encouragement, so thank you very much. To Jackie's father, Hans, appreciate you meeting you today, uh, earlier th uh, today th during the ceremony. To your, your sister, Ingrid, uh, that's here as well. Uh, thank you for making the trip from Florida to be with us. And I know that Jackie's mother, Joy, and her sister, Yvonne, are also tuning in as well. I think it's important to note that Jackie credits her parents' work ethic and positive attitude as her inspiration. Thank you all for your support to Jackie. <laughs> Finally, to all of Jackie's and Mary Ann's extended family and friends watching from across the United States and Holland, we appreciate you joining us. I know it's a great to uh, be part of this special day for both of them. Thank you for your support to these you've given to these amazing and inspirational leaders over the years. You see, talent and drive will only take you so far, but it's the love of family and friends that gives you meaning to our service. It's our family and friends that support us as we all strive for excellence. And excellence is exactly what Air Mobility Command experienced the last two years under the leadership of General Mary Ann Miller. For those of you who may not know, Mary Ann is the first in the history of the Air Force Reserve to pin on a fourth star. And the fourth woman to rank, reach the rank of four-star general in the history of our United States Air Force. Not bad for someone from a small town of Hillier, uh, Ohio, who thought on our college campus the building that had ROTC across the name of the building was just name, another name of a building. Not that it would launch her to be the top officer in charge of all of our mobility Air Force. And what a fast pace the tears has been. Soon after taking command, Marianne recognized the work ahead and shifted focus at the speed of relevance based on the national defense strategy. She produced the vision for, for AMC to get ready for the fight of the future and led the effort to change the mindset of the command's 110,000 airmen. Shifting from the wars of the last two decades, she sought to prepare and challenge her command to be ready to operate in contested and degraded environments. General Miller instilled a ready today to fight tonight, warrior mentality, and shifted the focus of mobility wings while still meeting the immediate needs of 11 combatant commanders. More recently, she led the Air, Force, the Air Force's largest COVID-19 response. Leveraging innovation and a whole lot of resolve, Air Mobility Command answered the call, generating and flying our most critical missions while also safeguarding our airmen and families. Under her steady leadership, Air Mobility Command delivered millions of COVID-19 tests around the world. And in less than a month, they took a design idea and made it a reality, using a negatively pressurized Connex container to safely move infected patients. On behalf of the entire joint team and our allies that you and your team consistently delivered for, and, and, and the untold number of civilians that you provided hope for through this crisis, Thank you so much, Marianne, for your leadership. Thank you for your vision, your determination, and for the dedication that you and your family has shown over a lifetime of service to our Air Force. Two years ago, my predecessor, General Goldfein, told you the Joint Warfighting Team 
and our nation look to you to ensure we will deliver global reach faster and farther than ever before with the right effects at the right place at the right time. I'm proud to say, on behalf of the entire Air Force, you answered that call. For the past years, based on our dates of rank, we typically sat next to each other at Corona and our four-star events. I always like to get in your thoughtful input and also getting kind of the inside scoop of what's the latest on the KC-46. But most impactful to me and to Shereen were the private words of encouragement you shared with both of us just two weeks ago. You've been very thoughtful. You've been a great friend. And we want to thank you. Our Air Force thanks you. And I know our nation thanks you for a job well done. Thank you, Marianne. And today we pass the guide on in this command to General Jackie Banobos. There's simply no more qualified and ready to take the reins of Edwin Bullock to command than Jackie. For more than 30 years, she has served with excellence. And earlier this morning, we made General Van Ambos the newest four-star general in our United States Air Force, number 218, and also made her the fifth woman to reach the rank of four-star in our service's history. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Ann and Jackie are the first and second women to command Air Mobility Command, the first and second of what I expect to be many more. They come in a long line of blue. I'm very confident of that fact. Because what you see here on stage this morning is what diversity and inclusion looks like amongst the senior leaders of our great Air Force. And I'm honored to share it both with, with both of you today. Very well done. Now, throughout Jackie's career, she has demonstrated great skill, courage, and leadership. First, proving herself flying C-141s during Operations Desert Storm, provide comfort and provide hope. And in every single role, since her intelligence and tenacity have proven time and time again, as a test pilot, as an acquisitions project officer, as a commander, on the joint staff, in every officer's dream, serving as the director of staff at headquarters, United States Air Force. In each role, her superior leadership guided her squadron, group, wing teams, and staff elements to remarkable success. Jackie, I, I know your passion is in helping others to reach their full potential. I'm excited to watch you pour your immense talent and dedication into leading the professionals of Air Mobility Command. And I'm excited to watch this command flourish under your steady leadership. Jackie and Alan, and uh, I know Shereen uh, really wanted to be here today to, to meet up with you again. We want to wish you both the very best throughout your command tour. And we take great comfort knowing that you and your airmen stand ready to execute global reach faster, farther, and better than ever before. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be part of today's very special ceremony, and God bless. Thank you, General Brown. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to introduce to you the commander, United States Transportation Command, General Stephen R. Lyons. I'll tell you what a, uh, what a beautiful day uh, for a ceremony. Just absolutely awesome. Well, allow me to start by thanking General C.Q. Brown for his remarks and congratulate him on becoming the number 22 Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force. Uh, our Air Force is in great hands, and he'll be an impressive member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, please join me in applause for this great leader at this time in our history. Thank you, sir. Well, it's a distinct privilege to be part of today's ceremony as we mark the transition of command from one exceptional officer to another. And in doing so, we recognize the outstanding professionals of Air Mobility Command. Farewell, General Mary Ann Miller, and congratulate General Jackie Van Ovos as the 14th Commander of Air Mobility Command. It's great to have so many distinguished guests join us in person and virtually some of the legends of the mobility enterprise whose shoulders which we stand on today are out there on the net. And just let me say thank you for being part of this. And none more important than the families 
of the Millers and the Vanovos that are plugged in watching uh, this event globally. While the ceremony marks a change in leadership at the top, I'm confident that General Miller and General Van Ovost would both agree that this is really about the great airmen that comprise Air Mobility Command, postured and employed globally 24-7 on the go. Let me first say, first and foremost, that I am AMC's biggest fan. I've said many times, and I will continue to say, I stand in awe of this Air Mobility Command team. I regularly hear your praises sung at the very top of the leadership in the department, and I assure you that our Mobility Air Force stands alone as the best the world has ever seen. AMC provides our nation with a powerful comparative advantage, one that is the envy of every one of our competitors, the ability to project military forces immediately on a global scale. A classic example is the no-notice deployment of a brigade out of the 82nd Airborne Division this past January, closing the force in just five days. AMC underscores conventional deterrence, assures like-minded partners, and ensures the United States of America can respond immediately with the military forces necessary to win. This team creates multiple dilemmas for our adversaries and multiple options for our national leadership. And this MAF team is tested and combat proven. This same Mobility Air Force capability that can be employed for war fighting also supports humanitarian missions and disaster relief. Powerful United States government implements providing hope for the suffering and the disenfranchised. The scale, the scale of what this organization is capable of is absolutely staggering. A mobility aircraft lands every three minutes somewhere on the globe every single day. Not even a global pandemic, as the chief pointed out, could stop these mobility airmen. For going on six months, COVID has been a part of everyday life. Air Mobility Command has fought on, shouldering new missions like delivering test kits and ventilators, repatriating American citizens, and rapidly developing new capabilities to meet airlift requirements for highly infectious patients. The Air Force, this United States Air Force, deserves high praise for delivering an aeromedical evacuation patient isolation system for COVID patients well inside of 90 days. To the airmen represented here and watching across the globe that run the aerial ports, that provide aerial refuel, that provide airlift, that execute patient movement, and that uh, respond with crisis response forces, thank you for all that you do for the Joint Force and for this TRANSCOM team. Of course, you know that the success of any great team depends on exceptional leadership. And these last two years, General Miller has been an icon of true servant leadership. She is a caring commander with deep convictions and faith, and she has been a powerful leader and a dear friend to Maureen and I. General Miller was the right commander at the right time, a shining example of Air Mobility Command's successful total force integration in every aspect of its mission set. Marianne, you have provided the perfect perspective and leadership at this critical time in our nation's history. Thank you very, very much. And while we will miss seeing you in uniform, we are pleased to know that your legacy will continue to have a positive impact on our United States Air Force and Joint Force for many decades to come through the investments that you have made in developing the next generation of military professionals. Moyne and I wish you the best in the next chapter. We thank you and we wish God's blessings on everything that you do. And what makes our military so impressive is that when one leader departs, their relief is equally impressive. General Van Ovos, we couldn't be more excited to welcome you and Alan to the TRANSCOM team. Under your leadership, there is no doubt that Air Mobility Command will maintain trajectory on course 
guided by the sure hands of great leader with an incredible resume. Not only is Jackie a twice graduated wing commander, a transcom alum, a mobility test pilot, her experience on the Joint Staff and within Headquarters Air Force makes her a perfect match to prepare Air Mobility Command for a future characterized by great, comp great power competition and ready to succeed in multi-domain warfare if required to do so. Jackie, welcome to the Transcom team. Welcome to you and Alan. I look forward to forging a strong partnership as we focus on warfighting readiness as our number one priority to support the national defense strategy. Welcome. So in closing, let me just again say thank you to our incredible air mobility professionals. I am so proud to stand with you. Together, we deliver. Thank you, General Lyons. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the presentation of the Distinguished Service Medal to General Miller. Attention to orders. Citations who accompany the award of the Distinguished Service Medal, Second Oak Leaf Cluster, to Mary Ann Miller. The President of the United States of America, authorized by Act of Congress, July 9, 1918, awards the Distinguished Service Medal to General Mary Ann Miller for exceptionally meritorious service and a duty of great responsibility. General Miller distinguished herself as Commander, Air Mobility Command, Scott Air Force Base, Illinois, from 7 September 2018 to 20 August 2020. During this period, General Miller launched a new strategic vision, boldly shifting the command's operational focus from counterterrorism to operations in contested environments and driving innovation as a path to warfighting agility. With clear foresight, she transformed the headquarters staff and battle rhythm, synthesizing staff expertise to produce quality information at the speed of war, and thus more effectively leverage a fleet of 1,100 aircraft through the total force wings to meet emergent global requirements for 11 combatant commanders as the air component to the United States Transportation Command. In this role, General Miller negotiated a myriad of command interests in United States Central Command, distilling a clear command and control agreement and maximizing the agile use of mobility assets to meet the Secretary of Defense's global force management intent. General Miller modernized America's air refueling capability by moving forward with the KC-46A Pegasus. This decisive action enabled design faults to be identified early through operational testing and led to early solutions as General Miller brokered an improved remote vision system which more effectively meets operator and warfighter needs and retains the path to operational viability on the timeline promised to the American public. Leading the Air Force's largest COVID-19 response, she brilliantly balanced risk to force with laser mission focus, rapidly pivoting the command to meet the emergent response needs of the pandemic and demonstrating the readiness of mobility airmen to meet the full spectrum of threats around the world. General Miller revitalized squadrons by building a command climate focused on empowering airmen, and through decentralized decision-making, she accelerated both operational capability and state of readiness for the command's 110,000 mobility warriors. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of General Miller culminate a long and distinguished career in service of her country and reflect the highest credit upon herself and the United States Air Force. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the Commander, Air Mobility Command, General Mary Ann Miller, Wow, what a day. This is amazing. Chief, thank you for your very kind remarks. It's been an honor and a privilege to serve with you over the years. My best to you and Shireen. You're amazing, Chief. Thank you. General officers, other distinguished visitors, Air Mobility Command, family and friends, thank you for joining us virtually in the midst, midst of, this, of the challenges of COVID. General Lyons, thank you for your incredible leadership, sir, your friendship, 
and for your steadfast focus on evolving for tomorrow. The challenges of today's global security landscape demand our full attention, and together, sir, we will deliver for the nation. My very best, my very best to best to you and Maureen. Um, I will miss the Lions family for sure. I will certainly miss Thanksgivings uh, without being around your table. So my very best to you. To the air mobility airmen around the world, thank you for the work that you do every day to fortify our national security. You serve at the heart of this nation's response. With a broad set of capabilities, our command helps preserve peace, influence world events, enable the joint force to protect, sustain, and reconstitute forces responding to crisis and contingencies anywhere in the world, a capability unmatched by any other country. On demand, Air Mobility Command meets national security objectives by projecting agile power through airlift, air refueling, aeromedical evacuation, and global air mobility support to meet the joint force requirements. When I took command, addressing you for the first time, I stated that you inspired me, that we stand as one force, shoulder to shoulder, with our guard and reserve airmen and families. I spoke of a common bond which guides all of us as individuals, as airmen, and as public servants. A bond of our core values and the inspiration to be part of something much bigger than ourselves. Each and every day of my command, I was driven. I was driven by your excellence, by your skill, by your care for the mission, and your absolute care for each other. Chief Green and I watched you run towards danger as Hurricanes Dorian, Michael, and Florence pounded our coast and devastated our communities. When Tyndall was wiped off the map, you were there to deliver teams and tools to put it back on the map. You ushered a new era for air refueling, the KC-46. Through every growing pain, you kept your eye on the prize, always working for the right solutions. You unleashed the power of ideas in the minds of mobi mobility airmen and set loose a torrent of amazing innovations. You listened to each other's ideas and you adopted commercial off-the-shelf technologies that have saved time and resources so that we can make the mission run faster. Because of you, we are working smarter, not harder. On the operational front, we watched you pull forces out of Syria at a moment's notice and reassure our inter international partners as we reopened a dormant air base in Saudi Arabia. And when the smallest little organism, a virus, became an enormous global threat, you didn't stop. You only continued the charge set before you. You went to work bringing millions of testing kits to American cities and selflessly evacuated COVID positive patients, reuniting them with loved ones and reconnecting them with the care that they so desperately needed. As a command, you were laser focused on success in today's operations wherever they took you, while simultaneously preparing and evolving for tomorrow's ever-changing landscape of threats. You challenged the status quo, taking air and medical evacuation to new heights and carrying our wounded warriors impossible lengths to restore hope. You challenged rogue dictators neglecting their own people by delivering food to the hungry. You weren't intimidated by a global pandemic. Through innovative thinking and a bias for action, you helped design, field, and operate the Negative Pressure Connex, a strategic game changer for America's patient movement system. In a very short time, you adopted the vision and you adapted to operations in a contested environment. 
Today, you are challenging our adversaries in cyberspace, and you are boosting the resilience of our command and control systems as you blaze a path towards the next generation Air Operations Center. During the world's largest mobility exercise, you built relationships with our international partners and allies, making us more interoperable and more ready. You have refined organizational structures and processes, enhanced training profiles, and honed the warrior ethos. With the support of world-class civic leaders, you strengthened mobility families. You gave back to your communities, and you made America even stronger. We've come a long way. And under General Van Ovo's leadership and wisdom, Air Mobility Command will thrive. General Van Ovost is absolutely the right leader for the complexities of our time. I could not be more excited for our airmen, for our command, and for the Van Ovost family. Jackie and Alan, my very best to you. Godspeed. Air Mobility Command is and will continue to be an integrated, agile, and indispensable force to our nation's global reach and global power. Every day we answer our nation's call to project decisive strength and deliver hope. 2020 has been a year with a surprise around every corner, one for the record books. As America was bringing in the new year, mobility airmen were responding to Iranian aggression. A few short months later, COVID-19 brought the world screeching to an abrupt halt. We can't always see what lies ahead, but we can see where we've come. And you have risen above every obstacle. And I know you will continue to lead the way in every challenge ahead, because that's just who you are. As airmen, we succeed. As airmen, we invest in serving this great nation and each other. As airmen, we lead from the front. We kneel by those in need. We share in the work of our teammates. We respect their lives, and we honor their contributions. As airmen, we are never alone. We are America's airmen. Thank you, airmen, for your selfless service to this nation, to our Air Force, and most importantly, to each other. It has been my honor and a privilege to have served with you these past few years. God bless you, God bless your families, and God bless America. At this time, the Deputy Commander, Air Mobility Command, Lieutenant General Brian Robinson will render General Miller her final salute on behalf of the men and women of Air Mobility Command. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the change of command. General Brown will now transfer command of Air Mobility Command and the air component of the United States Transportation Command from General Miller to General Van Ovost. The new command chief for Air Mobility Command, Chief Master Sergeant Brian Kruzelnik, will, will present the flag of Air Mobility Command. Attention to orders. Effective 20 August 2020, by order of the Chief of Staff of the Air Force, General Marianne Miller relinquishes command and General Jacqueline D. Van Ovos assumes command of Air Mobility Command. Please be seated. 
Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the Commander, Air Mobility Command, General Jacqueline D. Van Ovost. General Brown, I appreciate the trust and confidence that you and Secretary Barrett place by extending me this incredible opportunity. Thank you for your kind words and your inspiration that you provide every day to our total force airmen. I'm grateful for your leadership and greatly look forward to working closely with you and Shireen to build the increasingly integrated and more lethal joint force that will meet tomorrow's national security challenges and protect our nation. General Lyons, sir, thank you for your sincere words and your dedicated leadership of the U.S. Transportation Command. I'm looking forward to working with you and Maureen to strengthen the joint deployment and distribution enterprise and ensure that our air mobility warriors will continue to provide the unmatched capability to project and sustain the joint force in support of our national objectives. I am immensely grateful for my husband, Alan, my best friend who's been by my side for 28 years, and the incredible blessings of our four daughters. To my parents, sisters, extended family, and friends, thank you all for your love, devotion, and never-ending support during this amazing Air Force journey. General Miller, I admire your leadership and persistence as you transformed AMC into a warfighting headquarters and cemented the air mobility warrior mindset. You set high expectations for our airmen, but never higher than those you set for yourself. You're an inspiration to all of us. It's an absolute privilege to have learned from you and to follow in your footsteps. You're gracious and made the transition easy for Alan and I. We will be forever grateful. We wish you and your family the absolute best for the future. Chief Green and Devi, thank you for your leadership and wise counsel. You've certainly made lasting impacts on our airmen and their families, and I'm among the, the many grateful to have had an opportunity to work with you. Congratulations. To all of our distinguished visitors, thank you for sharing this event today and for your dedication to this nation and our Air Mobility Airmen. To our AMC Civic Leaders, thank you for your immeasurable support. You well represent the communities of Air Mobility Command, actively engaging to improve family support, which is a real readiness increase boost. I love how you embrace our Total Force Airmen and their families. Know that you are integral to the future success of this command. To our industry partners, thank you for your commitment to the Rapid Global Mobility Mission. From our craft partnerships who, to those who provide our concepts and technologies, you sharpen the competitive edge that we need to remain lethal and ready. I appreciate your close collaboration now and into the future. Chief Krizelnik and Kareem, our teammates and best friends, as we begin this leadership journey together, you are an incredible leadership team. I know that our airmen are in the best of hands, and I greatly, forward, greatly look forward to getting after every challenge with you. Chaplain Branningham, thanks for that wonderful invocation. Uh, you're a true blessing to this command. To Lieutenant Colonel Nieder, Captain Reed, our rock star protocol and public affairs team, the Air Force Band of Mid-America, today represents the Super Bowl of AMC events, and you knocked it out of the park. My family and I appreciate all of the work. Most importantly, to the men and women of Air Mobility Command, our total force team, and especially our families, that provide the never-ending support necessary, thank you. Thank you for your service and dedication to this command and to the Air Force. You are the reason that AMC continues to provide our combatant commanders with unrivaled rapid global mobility. As mentioned by all on this stage, the list of your incredible accomplishments is impressively long and it's inspiring. The foundation is set. It's now time to focus and accelerate. As a command, we will build upon these successes as we aggressively implement the national defense strategy through the unique mission sets that we provide for our nation. Essential to our continued success will be focused, committed action to develop the force and advance our warfighting capabilities. From the flight line to the front line, the cockpit to the clinic, 
Together, we will develop leaders of character with a natural bias for action and a curious, competitive, and innovative mindset. We will grow airmen who are resilient, multi-capable, and digitally adept, instinctively exploiting advances in data, computing, and information technologies, and armed with specific skills to deliver into the future. We will develop warfighting-focused airmen who approach every action from a joint and multi-domain perspective, and who are empowered critical thinkers and disciplined decision makers, utilizing their spheres of influence to make our mission better. As a command, we will embrace and champion new warfighting concepts to include joint all-domain command and control and agile combat employment. And we will increase the speed and agility across all of our rapid global mobility mission sets. Energized by rapid and agile develop development of capabilities, we will advance our warfighting and life-saving capabilities. We will expand upon our traditional mission sets and be a force multiplier within joint all-domain operations. Most importantly, we will consecrate the idea that being blessed with airmen inspired to make a difference every day requires each of us to fully embrace a culture based on dignity and respect and that champions diversity and inclusion in all aspects. Only then can we reach our full potential to serve our nation and each other. Collectively, our targeted efforts will maintain and maximize full spectrum readiness and generate the credible capacity required to project the joint force through increasingly contested environments and ensure our nation's strategic deterrence capabilities. My commitment to you is to ensure that my actions live up to the oath of office and are worthy of the sacrifices that you make for the mobility mission and the security of our nation, and to assure that we provide unmatched care for you and your families. I'm honored to serve, both as an airman and a commander, and privileged to follow such an impressive lineage of previous air mobility commanders whose vision and dedicated leadership postured this command and developed the leaders that we have today. Air Mobility Command has always been, and will continue to be, the shoulders that the Joint Force stands upon to rapidly project combat power around the world and the backbone of our nation's global humanitarian and disaster response. To lead the amazing Air Mobility Warriors of this command is an honor of a lifetime. You inspire me. I look forward to our journey together. Thanks. At this time, the Deputy Commander, Air Mobility Command, Lieutenant General Brian Robinson, will render General Van Ovos her first salute on behalf of the men and women of Air Mobility Command. Thank you, General Van Ovos. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Air Force song, followed by the departure of the official party. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our ceremony. The receiving line will be located to the back right of the hangar. 
You are welcome to take part in the cookies and refreshments at the table in the back center. Please ensure that you maintain social distancing at all times. And please, wear your mask and have a wonderful day.